Hey everyone, hey it's Steve for Different Chick Farm and Orchard. I am here with my wonderful daughter Alyssa and my amazing daughter Morgan and daughter. that's her call. Daniel is making a trash run. We are here in what originally was the tack room for our barn. This used to be, try not to make you too dizzy, this used to be a horse farm before we bought it. We had horses for a little while, but th this was a horse farm before we bought it for years and years and years. Um, and we had just a few horses. We've got a very large barn um, that we are starting as we continue to shift gears. We are starting to turn this over to um, grow space and usable space for the farm. We raised a lot of chickens for years. We are downsizing the chicken operation. See if you can see the smile on Morgan's face. Morgan, what do you think about downsizing chicken operation? Good idea. You know why she likes to downsize chicken operation? Chickens job. are her job. She would rather play with vegetables than to play with chickens or cats. She would rather play with cats than any of them but she likes working in the vegetable garden. She likes working in the greenhouse. She enjoys that kind of stuff. We're all kind of over the chicken thing. It's been great. We had a lot of good time with chickens, but we're down to, we want to downsize to a couple of meat breeds and an egg layer flock. And that may go down to an egg layer flock and one meat breed before this year is out. So in part of that, this room that you're looking at here, we had turned into a brooder room for our chickens. And I had built for our baby chicks. Uh, well, babies and up to juveniles. We raised them all winter long. This room is, is uh, mostly insulated. It's not perfect insulation, but it's mostly insulated. Um, it still stays a little cold on the concrete floor. Um, we have filled a few cracks with um, spray foam there's insulation behind that but to fix some of the bigger gaps we put some spray foam in that and we'll touch up a few other places on this as time goes but this is going to be turned into a propagation room um, we had done our propagation in our small greenhouse we got two 14 if you've watched any of our other videos you've seen videos on them we've got two 14 and a half foot by 24 and a half foot I believe uh, aluminum frame twin wall polycarbonate greenhouses um, if you'd like to see another video on them just comment below and we'll shoot another video um, and we have used one of those for propagation up until this year and we're that family we propagate in our house um, we we had transferred a last year a bookshelf transformed it into uh, a propagation grow light heat mat system well, what we're going to do for now for this year we're already propagating in the house i've got uh we've probably got 20 trays going right now we got peppers that are being trans up potted right now we're reseeding the next round of peppers and then we're getting ready to seed uh, our greenhouse tomatoes there'll be a video coming on that soon we have purchased a used greenhouse this is a 30 by 70 foot, two inch, well, technically inch and three quarter square tubing greenhouse, two inches well, the size that goes into the ground. So anyway, what we're going to do here is I used these for chick brooders. What we are going to, for this year, now next year I may build something a little bit better in here. But for this year, to save work, we're going to put our propagation flats in here. And we can put heat mats in here. And I will install some lighting overhead, LED lighting more than likely. We've got uh, several coming tomorrow. Uh, the order should be here tomorrow, so we'll do an unboxing video on that. But we'll be able to propagate this in here and handle quite a few. 
and we'll be able to have some grow lights for our peppers to keep them moving through the season so they'll continue to grow and be healthy. Uh, what I just put in there was onions and leeks, I think. I don't think there's nothing else in that. And then here, I have a tray of Bloomsdale spinach, gangbuster spinach. Those were old seeds they did not do very well. But we got a few that come up um, on the gangbuster. The Bloomsdale did real well. And we have, um, I can't pronounce it. We have another spinach. And I'm not the spinach expert, so we have some New Zealand spinach and some Nero kale, um, some scarlet kale, some rugged jack kale, some white Russian kale, some Dutch kale, um, some black magic kale, some blue curled scotch kale, and red Russian kale. Now, I've already, I had already done some measuring, and so I already knew that I could fit three trays in here. So if I can fit three trays, that means I can do a 20 by 30 heat mat in here, and I'll be able to do the same thing down below, right here. So that's six trays. And then we have this little small area that I'll be able to do probably three more trays in. And then same thing up here, three trays. Daniel, close our door. Daniel trying to let the heat out and the cold in. That's exactly the opposite of what we're trying to accomplish in here. Right, Alyssa? Yeah. Yeah, we want warm in, cold out. Warm out's fine too, but we don't want cold in. So... We're doing that, and then something else we have already started. And Alyssa just cleaned this one out for us. These, this is our GQF incubator. We also had a GQF digital hatcher, and then over beside Alyssa is a uh, is our older model that's not digital that we used for years. So, but we're, we've already started using our hatcher. It's in the house. It'll come back out here when this is done, to as a germination chamber. You can slightly control humidity in it. We already had these for chickens, so it's dual purpose. And so we can control the humidity in it to an extent, but we can control the temperature precisely, which helps on germinating your, your uh, crops. And so we're going to need more space. So now we're going to go to the incubator, the digital incubator up on the shelf, and we are going to start germinating in it. Now, it's not as good as the hatcher because I'll only be able to do four trays in it. I can do five in the hatcher, and I'll technically be able to do six in the hatcher before long. Um, so those work out real well for us. It's a digital control panel. They got alarms that sound if the temperature's not, not where it's supposed to be. So it's, it's going to work great. We'll semi-heat this room, try to maintain this room to around 60 degrees. And so that way, uh, 70 would be ideal, but I can't do 70. It's just going to be too expensive for the heating bill. So we'll maintain this to around 60, 65 at the most and uh, use the germination chambers. But we're looking forward to this project. Uh, I've got to get off here. We've got some lights to put up and a little bit more to do today before the other stuff comes in. The unboxing video we'll do tomorrow is on the big order that's coming in. But today we have some uh, four foot lights to put up and uh, get started working on that. Um, and I look forward to showing you how this turns out. So, Daniel, what? you're the only one that ain't been on video. You want to say, see you later? Be funny. All right. That's all of us out. Down here's Alyssa hiding in the floor. See her way back there hiding in the floor. You know, she didn't want to be on video, but oh well, I had the camera. See ya. Look for part two.